He's talking about the Niners. He's like, yeah, the Niners are the best team in the league right now, offense, defense. And he goes down the line of offense players and then gets defense. He's like, and my guy, Freddie G. Warner. Mm -hmm. I'm like, Freddie G. Warner? Shit! <laughs> I couldn't believe it. That's my boy, dog. So, uh, yeah, basically me and Brian, we tight now. You know what I'm saying, Brian, if you listen to this, man, much love, dog. Appreciate it. What's up, guys? Welcome to the Warner House, brought to you by 33rd Team. We are here on this Victory Monday. We are so excited to be here. We'll talk to you guys on Tuesday, but it's our Victory Monday today. And, I mean, I'll segue that to you. How do you feel about your win? We're feeling great. We're feeling wonderful. Obviously, life is just so much better when you're winning. We're 4-0. Shout out my guy C-Mag with the four. You know what I mean? Four tugs on, on Sunday. We'll talk about that more later. But, man, such a great feeling to be 4-0. We've got a really big test coming up Sunday night, of course. Huge game. Um, against the Cowboys. And, again, we'll talk about that more later. But, um, yeah, I just want to get to – Hear how your day was, honey. How you messed up my situation, but my day was great. Okay, good. Um, it was good. I woke up with a little sniffle, a little scratch in my throat, mm -hmm. but um, besides that, everything's fine. Mm -hmm. Um, I had a successful day at, for work, for house stuff, for personal things. Everything went really smooth. I feel really good going into the week. We've got a pretty slow week coming up mm -hmm. until Sunday. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's good so that we can be really focused and relaxed for the weekend. But, yeah, a really good, successful, productive Monday. Wow. Mm -hmm. And you look amazing doing it. Thank you. Makeup looks great. Thank you. <laughs> How was your Monday? What, so the people tell the people what a day after the game is like and, like, what you usually – what's your schedule like? Yeah, day after the game, Monday – is usually a day to go into the facility. You know, they have the players go through a lift and lift slash run because right after a game, people probably think, oh, you just need to go lay in an ice bath or something. It's like, no, like it's actually the exact opposite. You want to get your body moving, get the blood flowing, uh, you know, in order to start that recovery process so you can bounce back quicker. Um, and so that's exactly what we did today. You go in, you watch the film with the coaches, players, uh, you know, make corrections off of what we needed to improve upon and celebrate the things we did well on and then do any extra recovery things that you might need to do. Um, so it's a full day yeah, for sure. I know. It's good to see you. have been gone all day. <laughs> um, but you got all your stuff done, so that's, that's right. good. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Okay, well, we're going to dive into the game, like we said, a little later. But we wanted to talk about just like our days, what we've got going on. Also, there's a lot in television going on mm. right now. What is there? We, watch, we like to watch television in the morning. In the morning house. house, we sure do. We do. Yeah. So we'll talk a little bit about that. So just like last week, Bachelor in Paradise came out. Mm -hmm. Bachelor. Golden Bachelor. Golden Bachelor. Golden Bachelor. Sorry. Bachelor. Yeah. You. Golden Bachelor, Dancing with the Stars, also Love is Blind on Netflix, mm. which we are really into, came out. And we just finished the last little segment of episodes last night. Mm -hmm. And what were we talking about that I was like, because, oh, I said, I, I do not like Uche and. Oh, here we go. And Izzy. Uh oh. Okay. And I don't understand why no. you don't agree. Oh. No. Don't don't get too uh, don't get too fired up over it, honey. No, I do. Okay, they, because might be, they might be watching the pod. Of course, and that's great. That's fine. That's what he sh honestly. I don't think Uche is watching the pod. But if Uche <laughs> is watching the pod, I just like don't understand him. You know, I don't understand. First of all, like why I could really get into it, but okay. I mean, what do you feel? Uh, I feel like uh, you know it's just great fun television to watch. Here's my thing about Love is the the show Love is Blind, right? We're, let's just take a take a take away what's going on okay. in the new season, right? All right, the new season is what it is. Do I think it's the best season that they've come out with? No, I think it's a little slow. I think the fact that they only got two couples that are no. going through it right now yeah. because everybody else done dropped out. <laughs> yeah. So it was a lot of chaos, obviously, if you like that, a lot of drama. But they have only two couples that are live right now. Yeah. 
So anyway, the thing the thing about Love is Blind, though, which I've always said would make the show so much better. Like, all right, the concept Love is Blind. It's not. All right, sight unseen, right? But they're not really they're not really diving in like they should. Like so they need, us. They need to us. dive into the actual theme of the show because what do they do with the show, babe? You, they, they group up a bunch of people they're like, that they're are like, like they, they, they're they kind of all in the same little realm of looks, right? On the spec, yeah. They're all in the same little, I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to range them. You know, Hey y'all, <laughs> you, y'all can range them of, of attractiveness level. Okay. All right. They got, you know, they got good looking people on there, but they're all in the same range. Right. If love is truly blind, you need people on the opposite sides of the spectrum in terms of range of attractiveness level. Okay. Put them all in there to, to chat Give it up with one another. All right, we need some twos and threes in there and some eights and nines. Yeah. Twos and threes, and eights and nines. Love is blind. And put them, behind, put them behind the wall. Yeah. Do the same exact setup. Put them behind the wall. Make them fall in love with each other. Do the conversation. And then let's see if they're still in love after. All right, hey. And it's <laughs> it's no shame. I just want to. I just want to see. An, I just want to see what would happen. You want it to all. be more real. Just be more but, raw about it. Yeah, I mean, look, I want to see his love line. That's it. That's that's how you really. Well, they've get had to, some that's successes really right because there. they put a pool of people in. To, I think together mm -hmm. that would kind of maybe be yeah. interested in one another. Yeah. You know, yeah. on both ends. I think that's that's all. That's the only way it work. The show works. Okay. So you want, okay. No, I Gr mean, great show though. Great entertainment. But I think that they do it that way so that it's successful. Great entertainment. Um, you know what? They're on their fifth season now. Yeah. Obviously, production has gotten better and better every season. Yeah. Um, yeah, that that's a good show. If it's for so the, for the fellas who are a little hesitant, oh, Love is Blind. What the heck that sounds like? Put your pride aside. Go ahead, watch a little Love is Blind <laughs> with your lady. All right, because now we now we get into the realm of some other shows that we're about to start talking about. All right, Bachelor, obviously. My, my beautiful wife was on the show. I wouldn't even even met her if she wasn't on the TV show. Yeah. You got the Bachelor. You got the Bachelor. You got this new thing, Golden Bachelor. Where you got the, you know the um. I, know. I don't. I don't want to call them old folks. You know that's that's He's that's a little mean. 70s? That's a little mean. Obviously, it's a little. You know, it's an older Bachelor. I think it's fifties, sixties, and seventies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I love it. I love it. I love the opportunity to um. You know, rekindle that fire no, later I do too, on in life. Both of our moms are single and mm -hmm. in those age ranges ish. Not your mom. Uh, my, no. Your mom's way younger, but yeah. my mom is. Okay. My mom's older. Yeah. And it's just nice to see people in their middle and older ages be able to. It's they're just like it's they're just like I think sometimes we forget that mm -hmm. we're gonna be that old, yep. you know, and we're gonna be the same exact person inside. Mm -hmm. We're just gonna look older on the outside. Mm -hmm. So it's so sweet to see these people that are so excited to be in love and find a husband or a wife, and it's so sweet. And they've lived so much life before, mm -hmm. so, and they still have so much hope, mm -hmm. which is really sweet to see. So I think that they made a really good choice with doing the golden bachelor i think so too yeah yeah really sweet i was i was actually interested how how late they kept those the the, the folks up <laughs> on that first night because usually i you know that first night is a little longer yeah so the what first I, night of heard. filming you usually start around 10 30 11 the night you start mm -hmm. start the night at 10 I mean, that's like the late, the later end of it. But yeah, I mean, because there's so many limousines that come in. I think I was like the second or third limousine. But there's so many limousines that packed with girls that come in. You start so late, so late. You get, I'm, I'm, I was ready, I think, by 8 o'clock p.m. And I don't think we rolled out really until like 10, 30, 11, if I'm remembering correctly. And the night, you just go, 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 go. Until about and when the is first it? When rose is it ceremony on the first night was, I think, around 6, 7 a.m. Yeah. And then you, you know, I made it, you get your rose, you put all your, you don't go to bed until. So you pull an all, you pull an all nighter on the yes, first night. Drinking, mingling, talking the whole time. Interview. Yeah. It's an all nighter. Okay. So obviously for these golden bachelor folks, they did, they didn't make them do that. Well, I think it, their bedtimes are like seven, eight o'clock. It looked like they did when they had the, when the rose ceremony, it was the same situation where you could see outside. It was, it was daylight. So I'm almost. I, so did they? How they keep them up that long? There's no way they all would have fell asleep. They would have fell asleep. Jimmy Fallon's like aunt or grandmother or something was on there. Yep. She was so funny. Yep. 
She was she was asleep. Yeah. Yeah. Was that asleep. was like one of the things. She was the older one. I think she was around 85 years old. Listen. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, hey, there's nothing like a good night's rest. All right. And yeah. uh, they, they that's what they that's what they need. So, yeah, it's really good. And then we dove into um, Dancing with the Stars. Okay. Yeah. Which we, I was so excited we've about. Never, we never actually watched that. No, no. We've never watched Dancing with the Stars. That was one that kind of popped up. And uh, it was actually, a, a, yeah, it was, it was surprisingly good. Yeah, I'm really excited to watch that again. You're, who was the guy that you were so, wanting to see dance so much? Oh, Adrian Peterson. Yeah. Yeah, they had a, a, AP on there, one of the NFL yeah. goats. Uh, who did he play for? The Vikings mm-hmm. was the team that he made his name for. And he for. did good. He got a good score. They he got a good stayed. score. The, the facial expressions were a lot. But uh, <laughs> other than that, uh, I think the thing about it that I realize is you got to really commit Regardless if you can dance or not, if you commit to it and be like, oh, I don't care if I look silly or not, then you, you're going to be all right. You're going to yeah. get a good score. You know, they're going to respect it. Bye bye. If they're smart, they'll ask you to be on once you retire one day. Yeah, I wouldn't mind going on. You would kill it. I wouldn't mind going on. You know, I got a little rhythm. I'm not going to give the fans too much right now. <laughs> yeah, right, I'll save it for Dancing with the Stars later on. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see. You kill it. Um, but okay, that wraps up like our TV recap, I think. Yeah. There's a game on right now as we speak. We don't really know what's going on. Yeah, Seattle versus Giants. Yeah. That's a, that's a big one. What a about, big NFC game. What about from yesterday? Were there any games um, besides ours, of course, that you were, like, shocked or interested to see? Yeah. There's lots of games on yesterday. Let's see. I mean, I, it was a pretty big deal that the, that the Bills, Buffalo Bills, got after the Dolphins like they did. The Dolphins – it was the Dolphins, us, and the Eagles were the last three remaining unbeatens. And the Dolphins went into Buffalo, and Buffalo said, mm-mm-mm, y'all not coming out of here undefeated. And they, they put a hurting on them. Buffalo's always a really good team, though. It seems They've been like. really good for the last few years. Mm-hmm. When Josh Allen's protecting the football, um, they are as good as anyone. You know, he's really talented quarterback. It's just he, you know, sometimes he's his own worst enemy. He would turn the ball over. So, but he, like I just said, he when he's when he's protecting it and making the plays that he does, they look yeah. darn good. And defensively, sorry, I got to speak on this. Defensively, Matt Milano playing top tier football right now. He was a first team All Pro with me last year, and right now I haven't even been watching his tape like that. But I just see flashes, and boy, is he balling right Where now. Where did he go to college? I think Boston College. He'd been in the league about seven, oh, eight years. Oh. Yeah. He's doing his thing, though. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. I was interested to see the Jets because we know Zach personally. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. love Zach. Mm-hmm. And he did so good. He did so and good. And that was so cool to see. Absolutely. Because they're expecting him to just fail, and he's not. And yeah. I just love that. Yeah. No, there's people in the media – uh, specifically who, you know, been trying to talk, bash him, talk bad on him, uh, which on, honestly, I, if, if you're a viewer, if you're just a casual fan, I think that makes you root for him even more, mm-hmm. you know, because you, you, you don't want to, you don't want to see a he's kid go young. like, yeah, I know he's, he's young, like, come on now, like, and he's, he's doing it the right way. Um, hasn't always been pretty, but um, I was really excited to see him Me have too. a good game. I'd love good. to see him succeed. It's like he's. So I wish I could have seen more of that game, the Chiefs Jets game. It was it was a tight game all the way to the end. I remember them when we were watching the game, your game. They put up the scores of the other games on the big screen, mm-hmm. and I saw that they were losing pretty bad, or they were like two scores behind. Who was? Jets. The Jets were two scores behind. I think. Okay. And I just remember, like, oh man, the thing. That which sucks. even, which even, I mean, that is even doper that they were like Zach was able to will them to like. You know, have a chance was, at I mean, a lead. It was like seven fourteen or something. They were just down. Oh, they, yeah, they were down. Yeah. yeah, I mean, playing from behind is not easy. Like you want to obviously Especially play from the, ahead. Uh, at the Chiefs, were they at the Chiefs? No, I was in New York. They were in New York. Taylor Swift there, all that. Mm, okay. That's getting not exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <my God. sighs> okay, well, um, but yeah, and then D'Amico and the Texans got another win. They did big, a big win. Yeah, they at did. home against the Steelers. It was like 30 to 6, I think, or something oh, like that. that was the one. Yeah. Ooh, the Steelers lost so bad. I know, yeah. I, I think Kenny Piggy got hurt that game, oh. so that made it worse. That sucks. Mm-hmm. Well, good for D'Amico. Good for D'Amico. Hate that for the Steelers. Hate that for the Steelers. Um, okay. Well, other than that, yeah. That was pretty much the, the ones to look out for. That's the ones that kind of come to mind. Oh, and then the one, obviously, overseas, the uh, the London game. 
Jaguars, we're, Falcons. Because they're about to bark. Sorry, we have dogs that like to bark. So, um, Falcons, Jaguars, overseas London. Toy Story game. Toy Story. Where I don't know where that came from. Mm, I don't know either. <laughs> if somebody can enlighten me on where the Toy Story little theme of the game came from and why they were doing that and the the live sim, what is it? What do they call it? Simulcast of like the the little toys playing. I know they did that with like Nickelodeon slime every now and again. Yeah, and Flan was mad that we we didn't have a Toy Story game because that's he wanted to see his own little character as a toy. That's cute. Out there running the down, kids, running down. How many kids are watching the game? Yeah. It was different for sure. Maybe they want to get the younger crowd involved, you know. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that, I think that, that that's just about. Who won that game? The Jaguars. The Jaguars. Yeah. That's so fun. I wish we could get a London game. We'll see. Maybe in the future. That would be so. We play fun. in Jacksonville this year, though. I know. I'm not. I'm not going. <laughs> <laughs> it's too far. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyway, <laughs> let's let's talk about our game. Okay. I'm up. What do you want to talk about? Uh, let's see. Let, well, how was your experience? I had fun. I went with family. It was a good time. Mm-hmm. Um, we sat around. We got there on time. We saw you run out. You didn't get like a – it was the offense that got to run out and be excited. But um, it was good. It was mm-hmm. chill. You guys killed it mm-hmm. immediately. So I, don't, I always get nervous, obviously. Mm-hmm. So I was just, you know – the way that you the offense went out and scored and then you guys got three and out i was like we're great we're gonna do we're we're doing you guys got three and out and then the the offense went down to score right um and then you know we did it again and then well christian did it again (laughs) and christian did it again (laughs) um so yeah it was awesome to see i did get a little nervous at halftime like right before (laughs) we went out just like as you know how i am i'm just I can relax and really have a good time if we're two scores up. I'm just like, okay. I, I think we were we were two scores. Really? Yeah, we were two scores at the oh. half. Maybe it was – It's okay. They just scored right before the half, so it was kind of yeah. like a momentum thing. It was. it was like, oh, my gosh, how did we let that happen type of deal. Yeah, that's what it was, but it's fine. Um, <clears throat> what was your favorite moment of that game? My favorite moment – Hmm. You know, there was there was a lot of a lot of good moments. Um, you know, not I'm trying to, I'm trying to think of like any like sideline banter to kind of like give a fans a little glimpse into what goes on to the sidelines. Um, I don't I don't remember anything too juicy happening on the sideline this game though. You know, we're up there looking at the jumbotron when Christian scores, and then like the little graphic comes up, the fact that he has more consecutive games. Of uh, with, with a touchdown than Jerry Rice, and it's like whoa, that's he kind broke of, the Niner record. Right? Yeah, yeah, yes. So, so that's kind of a big he's deal. He's the guy, the guy to beat. He's the guy to beat mm-hmm. after literally just one and a half seasons with the Niners. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I almost caught like a calf cramp and I had to like get some salt on the sideline. I remember that being a thing it at the end so of the game. Hot. It was hot. Yeah. It was. I you, forgot to mention. You forgot to mention. I thought you were going to say it, but I was like, oh. I forgot. I, I tried to get out of my mind. It was <clears> so <throat> hot. When I tell you. <laughs> it was hot for California. It's, well, it's at 71 to 74. So I'm like, <laughs> it's okay. perfect weather. I wore shorts uh-huh. because I knew, you know, seven, but I wore a little. It was so. It was hotter than I expected. I don't know why. I was not. I was counting down the minutes. The sun was just beaming a little bit. Mm-hmm. And of course, that it. was the game that I would be sitting outside. Mm-hmm. Of course, those odds. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it was miserably hot the mm-hmm. whole entire game. Mm-hmm. So I can't imagine how that was for you guys running around. It was a little hotter than than I expected. <laughs> yeah. That's why you know the calf got a little, and I had to get a little little salt. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it was good. It was good. Go ahead. What were you saying? Um, I did see whenever also when they're showing the jumbotron, LeBron James was like live tweeting or on live or doing. They something. said they showed the jumbotron. They showed a, the tweet that he tweeted about Christian McCaffrey. That's right. And then after the game, I saw that he was talking about you. I know. Okay, talk about that. <laughs> First of all, the fact that Bron even knows my name is like whoa. So I get on my phone, of course, after the game. I'm checking the notifications, and uh, somebody had like 
uh, either tweeted at me or some Instagram mention of like, hey, it looks like LeBron is a big fan of Fred Warner. I'm like, what? So I watched the video and he's talking about the Niners. He's like, yeah, the Niners are the best team in the league right now, offense, defense. And he goes down the line of offense players and then gets defense. He's like, and my guy, Freddie G. Warner. Mm -hmm. I'm like, Freddie G. Warner? Shit! <laughs> I could believe that, my boy. Dog. So, uh, yeah, basically, me and Brian, we tight now. You know what I'm saying, Brian? If you listen to this, man, much love, dog. Appreciate and who it. Who else calls you Freddie G? It's the only other person that's ever called. Yeah, that's another thing. Like, Fred, I don't know Freddie G. I don't know where that comes from, but uh, the only other person that's ever called me Freddie G is is Trent Williams. Yeah, and uh, he, and he, that's literally his name. That's been my name that he's called me ever yeah. since. We we've been on the same team, so now him and him and uh, LeBron call me Freddie G. Wow! So that, yeah, that was a moment. Um, and speaking of of uh, basketball, you know, if we kind of steer steer on to basketball now, okay. switch switch gears. Um, people have this discussion right about the goat, LeBron, Michael Jordan. Some people who really love Kobe talk about. Kobe Bryant. I happen to be wearing a Michael Jordan t-shirt right now. Oh, look at that. Right. Okay. Now, this is not to say that the, the Michael Jordan is just outright the, the greatest of all time, and I'm, I'm disrespecting Bron, right? That's not that's not it at no, all. I'm sure LeBron – My whole Michael. thing has always been – and I'm not a basketball player, all right? I don't know much – I mean, I know a little bit about basketball. I don't know a whole lot. But you got to just – you just got to respect the different eras of greatness, and the game has evolved so much over time. Now, when Le when Michael was playing, and I don't, I never watched Michael because I was too young, but I've seen the Last Dance like a million times, and I've watched the videos, I've watched the interviews, and people that like, like he was the guy, and it was nobody else. There was no other discussion about nothing. Like Michael Jordan, he was a freaking. Wait, wasn't Larry Bird in the discussion? Um, I don't. I mean, Larry Bird and um. Magic Johnson, like those guys were the, they were the guys before Michael Jordan. He was younger than them. <clears throat> he was younger than them. Mm -hmm. So then when Mike started coming up in the ranks mm -hmm. and he started separating himself, they're like, oh boy, hey, Mike's the man now. Like he, he, all right, he got it. He got it. Like we had our time. We got to pass it on now. So it's always like, there's just so many different levels of greatness, you know, and who, who's to say who the greatest of all time is, you know, I love to study the greats, basketball, football, soccer, baseball it doesn't matter what sport it is or what even like it, it could be like in business i just love to study the greats to see like all right what's their mindset like how are they working what makes the what separates them from everybody else you know because like we're all human at the end of the day but like why are they all of a sudden like just amazing you know mm -hmm. and so i've always like studied them studied mike studied kobe like the whole mama mentality thing and lebron obviously the fact that he's been able to do what he's done at such a dominant level for this amount of years, nobody can touch that. Mm -hmm. People are going to talk about all day, all the finals and the this and the that, the rings. All right. But, like, the level of dominance th throughout the amount of time, unbelievable. So, much respect. Uh, I don't really have – I mean, obviously, I never – I didn't really have an NBA team growing up. I guess maybe the Lakers being from SoCal. I don't know if you had an NBA team or if you followed NBA when you were growing up. I don't yeah. know a thing about basketball, truly not a thing. <clears throat> Besides that, this era, like LeBron James is the guy. Of course. That's the only really thing I know. And because we do love to go to Warriors game and Steph yes. Curry is the guy yes. also. Yep. Can't forget about him. Absolutely. Um, so I just know those are the two that – are just always on the forefront of my mind when I think of basketball. Yeah. Going to Warriors games and being a fan of the Warriors, obviously in this like part of the, their, I guess what you want to call it. I don't want to call it a dynasty. It's not a dynasty. A few years ago, it was a dynasty though. They, yeah. They, they just been playing really high level basketball for a really long time. Ever since we, We've been here in the Bay, so like yeah. being able to be right there so to it's witness it. A little bit, we're in our dynasty. Yeah, go Warriors. <laughs> hey, it's not, hey, I ain't got nothing bad to say about them. They bully Steph Curry. All right, I mean it's unreal watching the dude. He's unbelievable. Yeah, he is. But he's like, a, I'm pretty sure he's a Panthers fan because he's from Carolina. So that's mm, that's a bummer. That's unfortunate. We got to get him out to a Niner game and just maybe maybe okay, turn him so turn him over to the to the good side. 
Well, <clears throat> I love going to the Warriors games. We have right. so much fun. Yeah. I love it. And then when we were in New York, we went to – what was that team? Uh, the New York Knicks. That was a fun game, but they, they're not – they're not the best. I mean, they or yeah, as fun to watch, in my opinion. Exactly. They don't have a Steph Curry. Yeah, they don't have a Steph Curry. So yeah, I really enjoyed that. But that was just so cool that LeBron noticed you and you got that recognition because he's the best at what he does. Absolutely. So that's all you said. That was an all timer. Be the best, be the best, be the best. All timer. That's awesome. All timer. Love that. I'll remember that forever. Mm -hmm. Um, and then let's see. Let's talk about players of the game, right? Going back to football, let's talk about the players of the game. Do you have, from watching from afar, who are the players of the game, offense and defense? Okay. Offense, I would say CMC. Okay. Pretty easy pick. And then defense, I'll say Fred Warner. Oh, wow. You had a good game. Wow, thank you, you honey. Amazing tackles. Thank you. You had a good game. Thank you, babe. You're welcome. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you said CMC and me. Um Okay, so let's all since you said those two, I'll say offensively my MVP of the game. I think I'm going to give it to Brock Purdy. Oh, yeah. Brock Purdy, I think, was 20 for 21 completion. Uh, so that means he literally only missed one pass, threw a bunch of yards, was just on the money, took care, took care of the football as a defensive player. That means the world. Mm -hmm. All right. When you're able to take care of the football all game, not give the ball to the other team, that means more, honestly, than just like going out there and just throwing a bunch of touchdowns and then throwing like two or three picks. You know what I'm saying? No, it was for up. both of us, too. We didn't have any turnovers. They didn't have any. Well, yeah. We, us not having any turnovers, that's not good. That's, we we got to be better. No, about I that. know, but I'm just saying on both ends. But yeah, you're right. It was it was goose egg, goose egg. Like it mm -hmm. it was zero, zero. Mm -hmm. So the fact that we were still able to like put up what it was like 30s. I don't even remember the score. Thirty some, thirty five, sixteen. So the fact we were able to like have that dominant performance without any takeaways, like just speaks to how well the offense played. So this upcoming big game, we got to get the ball out a little bit more. I'm gonna try to punch the ball, you know, catch a little something mm -hmm. in this next game on Sunday night. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Brock Purdy, I would give to the offense. Defense, um, yeah, I'll probably stay in the linebacker realm, and I go with my boy Dre Greenlaw. We both had 10 apiece, 10 tackles. Uh, Dre is, I mean, I've, I've spoken on him a ton already. Obviously, so fun to play with, just with the violence, the the speed, physicality, tenacity, just a player all through and through. It's a guy you want on your what, side. What about the defense do you think look, we could have done better, that you didn't see, like, this game that we had, like, last game, you know? Oh, just the takeaways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the takeaways. I mean, that – you get two or three of those, that cleared up the whole that clears up the whole game. Uh, it don't matter what you did bad. You take that ball away, clears everything up. Okay. There's let me let me teach you something real quick. Okay. The number one thing that determines winning and losing games in the NFL is the turnover battle. The turnover battle is what we just talked about. The offense either giving it away, us taking the ball away, whoever is plus in that category. So like if we took the ball away one time and uh they weren't able to. Mm -hmm. Like offense was able to hold on to the ball and it was zero. That means we're plus one. Mm -hmm. If we took the ball away twice and the offense didn't give any away, plus two. And the odds are, even if they don't score on that, <clears throat> odds are whoever has the most takeaways wins. Whoever wins the turnover battle is usually the one that's going to win that game. Okay. So we've we've been really good in the last couple of years of winning the turnover battle, mm -hmm. and that's always our emphasis. We want to protect the ball on offense. We want to take the ball away on defense, and that's the that's the the little mixture magic of winning. That's the, that's the magic. <laughs> that's the little magic elixir okay. in Harry Potter to win a ball game. Okay. Well, that means this Sunday we need three at least. Three. At least. At least. <laughs> that's honestly the goal every year, every week. We say we want to take three, give none. I feel like it, it's going to – I'm not going to speak on it because I'm going to let life happen. No, you know what? Let's speak on it. Well, let's talk about the Cowboys okay. a little bit. Let's talk okay. about the game we got coming up. Okay. The Cowboys are rolling into town, right? They're coming off a big win in against New England. I think that was at home for them. They needed a bounce back game. You know, they got they lost to the Cardinals on the road, and I remember watching that tape to prepare for Arizona, and you could just tell like they just didn't they just didn't show up. You know, they they you, their players looked tired. They looked I don't know like they just were they, they were uninterested. It didn't look like they were prepared to to go. They maybe thought they they maybe they slept on the Cardinals a little bit. But they have looked 
super dominant, especially on the defense side of the ball through, you know, every game besides that game last week, which one through three, two, um, they've looked dominant. And offensively, you know, I think Dak's really being really efficient with the football. I got to watch some tape tonight, actually, to try to get try and get to get ahead on that. But I saw an interview that he did today where someone just asked him about um, losing to us last year, and he was not excited about. Too excited. He asked that question. He was pissed Uh-oh. when they asked him. So I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I mean, I guess it's good when you go into a game really angry and frustrated. I guess that's good. I don't know. If that's good for us or good for them. I'm not sure. Exactly. But I mean, yeah, they they haven't beat us since uh, 2020. I think is the last time right. they beat us. So obviously, it's something that's kind of like been a monkey on their back a little bit. There, it's something that's going to be talked about all week. Yeah, they're going to get fired up over it because you don't want that attached to your name. Nobody does. I mean, I I think for the longest time, uh, who had our number? It was Seattle. I think for the longest time had our number where we just could not win a game against yeah. those boys. Like they had our number and like, it's so sickening to hear that every single time you play them, you're going into that week. Like, Oh, all right. Yeah. Seattle has our number, blah, blah, blah. All you want to do is win. Kobe, <laughs> Kobe. come here, buddy. Yeah. Here enough of the noises. So anyway, um, yeah, they're going to be fired up, ready to go. It's going to be, it's going to be one for the ages. Last year in the playoffs playing them was by far the most fun game I've ever been a part of. Uh, and I obviously had probably the game of my life that game. Um, that was such a fun game. I mean, just the, just the fact that so many eyes on on that, because like the, the history of the Niners versus the Cowboys, mm-hmm. you know, back in the 80s, 90s, like it was – that was that was it, and then now being able to kind of be a part of that now, and you know you have all the legends of on both sides at the game, right? Watching, wanting to see like, all right, what's the new regime look like? What's what's the new players like? How do, how are they going to compete and and do their thing? And so that's why last year meant so much to me to show up in that in that kind of moment, um, you know, for our fans, mm-hmm. for our alumni who played here, all that. And so this game is obviously very important. What time is the game off? Um, 5.20. So it's Sunday night football? Sunday night. All eyes will be on us. Whoa. You got two of the top teams in the NFC playing oh against each gosh. other Sunday night. I'm literally getting like – Getting a little – Butterflies nauseous. a little bit, nauseous. Oh. I get so nervous. Mm-hmm. Well, for me, this is these are the moments you dream of. Okay. These are the ones you dream of okay. playing in, in these ones right here. Uh, when all the light the lights are on, everybody's watching. Like, I, it's funny because like I, I talk about it with some of like the the young players and stuff, and it, it applies to old guys to older guys too. It's like one game can literally change your life. You go out there, and let's say who's a young guy on our defense? I don't know. It could be anybody. Let's just say I go out there and I get a pick six to win the football game. In a 49ers Cowboys uh, Sunday night football game. LeBron's going to be knocking at our door. <laughs> <laughs> like, that one moment is literally like, I mean, a pick six is a big deal, right? And you can get a pick six in any game, but in that specific game with that many eyes on you, like, you'll, like, it'll change your life. Yeah. Right? And so, uh, not to say that you got to do anything differently going into a game like this, but. Uh, you know, you obviously want to make sure that you're as well prepared as you can be because, like, it means a lot. Yeah, it does. Um, they got us as the favorite in the game and all that other stuff. I don't, I don't, I mean, obviously, I, I hear, I hear it, heal. I hear it, but it, it actually absolutely means nothing. We have the only advantage we have is being at home. That's yeah. it. Like, that's great. We love playing at home, having our fans behind us will be major. Other than that, there's, I mean, it's, it's toe to toe. Yep. Like head to head, two amazing football teams, two great teams going at it, battling, and uh, yeah, mm-hmm. it's gonna it's gonna be a fun one. I can't wait. No, it's gonna be good. I'm so excited. <clears throat> Two more days, and there we are. Two more days, it'll be good. here in, in a blink. No, I'm gonna take it easy this week. Get ready. Mm-hmm. Should we uh, answer some fan questions? Okay, let's answer some questions. This is our favorite, my favorite part of mm-hmm. the segment. 
So this week we are okay. Let's see. You wanna you wanna do the okay? Yes, I'll do the first one. Okay. Okay. First question is from Jonah F R M Jonah from, from the, the beach. beach. 9135 mm-hmm. and he says drop the pregame playlist the faithful wanna know i mean that's for you fred okay so no, i think they want to know what your playlist is babe you know we're going on <laughs> <laughs> that's it every single sunday as i'm getting ready i'm listening to morgan wallen morgan wallen some country what are, what are you listening to man i just so my music choice it's actually pretty specific, you know. Over the years, I've I've realized you gotta you gotta kind of maintain the energy levels as the the lead up to the game happens. If I'm listening to some really hardcore Meek Mill, Rick Ross, like <clears throat> like just hardcore, like NBA Young Boy, something that's really just intense yeah. from the jump, like when I wake up, exhausted. You get to the game, you're, you're, you're burnt, you're burnt up, all right, because you've been on ten since the moment you woke up. Yeah. So like, I like to turn on something that is rap, hip hop, but not something that's like too intense right away. You know what I'm saying? So like, it could be like Drake, it could be Lil Baby, it could be, um, I don't know, any like type of hip hop. That's that, I even listened to Fifty Cent the other day before yes. the before the uh, the Giants yeah, game. I feel about 50 Cent. Some old school Fifty Cent, like it was not, it wasn't too much, but it was like kind of like it was a vibe, like it was like okay, yes. boom, like I was vibed out. Love and then it. as the the lead up to the game happens, that's where I start to turn it up a little bit. The Meek Mill start to come out. The and how long do you do that for? That I'll put that on probably an hour before the game. Like as I'm starting to put my pads on, you know, and the pre workouts going in the system. Okay. That's that's when. <laughs> That's when the, that's when the music starts to crank up a little bit, oh all right. Because listen, as you could probably see here, I'm a mild mannered, I'm a mild mannered cat, mm-hmm. right? There is a dog inside me, and I got to pull him out when it when it's when it's needed. Mm-hmm. And so right before the game, like there's a there's a for sure a process of of bringing that doggy out. It's just like leveling up every hour. Of leveling the day. up, but like I just said, you want to you don't want to. You don't want to burn it up. Right out the gates. Right out the gates. Out, you can... I mean, we talk about the Sunday night game, right? That even more so in oh, that yeah, aspect. Like it, Niners, Cowboys, from the jump, you wake up in the up. Oh, my God, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. And then by the time 520 comes, you're done. You're done. You're done. You're done. All right. And some people can do it. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Everybody, you know, everybody's different. I just know what works for me. Yeah. And I know what I need. <laughs> All right, so you gotta maintain the energy level. That's that's a crucial key right there for the folks listening. So, no, yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Okay, that that was very that was very good. Yep. Okay, your turn. Okay, let's see what we got. <clears throat> At DJ ninety seven, we got Sydney. Are you as competitive as Fred? And Fred, what was your relationship with Robert Sala and Navarro Bowman? So, babe, are you competitive? So, I. I think you yes. Mm-hmm. The answer is um, yes. It is. Yep. I get one thing about me. If I can toot my own horn, I'm us. If I apply myself, mm-hmm. I'm usually good at whatever you throw at me. Wow. Yes. Wow. Because if I if I, if I apply myself, okay. But the circum situations where that hasn't been true. That sounded like circumcision. Circumsituation? Circumcision? I got me- – yeah. It's okay. I meshed that. I was, I just, yeah. Okay. The situations <laughs> where that's happened is like tennis. Remember? Okay, tennis. Mexico. Yes. Yep, we played tennis, tennis in Mexico. And I kind of freaked out a little bit. Absolutely. Kinda it wasn't going out. your way. You start <clears throat> smashing the racket on the ground. Was, no, I'm just kidding. You didn't do that. But, uh, yeah, you, you're you a competitor, babe. Like, if you're not – if it's not coming to you like the way you want it to, then you're going to start getting a little – yeah, I get really irritated. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I, I am. I'm definitely competitive. I like to be good at whatever I do. And if I'm not, I get pissed off. So, yeah, I'm competitive. Okay. Mm-hmm. And you happen to marry the most competitive human on the planet. I know. And sometimes that doesn't mesh. Mm-mm. Example, game night. Mm-hmm. Never good. Never good. You Uno, guys, no, Monopoly. You guys, we have – our families love games. We love game night. Game yep. night. That's all we do whenever yep. our families get together. Yeah. And Fred's like low key addicted a little bit to this game called Monopoly. I don't know if you ever heard of it. Yep. 
It's a pretty popular game. Mm -hmm. And him and his brother and his whole family really have this addiction um, to Monopoly and to, and I've never heard of this. It's the longest game ever. Yep. There's so much to it. I don't understand what it is, but that's y'all's thing. So that we was adopted a key thing that. You just said there. There's a lot to it. All right. And so if, you, if you're not dialed in, then that's why you don't know. The amount of fights, people <clears throat> leaving, getting in vehicles, yeah. leaving states uh -oh. over these Monopoly games mm -hmm. is incredible. Fred's mom probably brought her to tears at times because she gets so upset about y'all okay, fighting. No. I, I could see her getting upset. Get a little upset. Yeah, because when you guys go at it, mm -hmm. it's nuts. Yeah. Me, I could even start crying mm -hmm. because playing a game with this man right here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. You better be ready because it's out of control. So, if you see this man on my t-shirt, this was probably the most competitive human being on the planet. Damn near close. I'm right there yeah. with him. So uh, um, I'm competitive. Is. Fred is competitive. Our family's competitive. Mm -hmm. It's just it's it's a uh, it's fun. Competitive competition breeds excellence. All right, it breeds greatness. It brings the best out of you, yeah. the best and so, the worst, and the worst. But honestly, more of the best. Okay. All right, because sometimes the worst is the best. <laughs> you're the first or you're last. All right, that's that's what it is. Monopoly. I could sit here. I could talk about Monopoly, you guys, all day long, oh but. Um, just the fact that there's so many different ways to win. It's not like a straight path in the game. Everybody starts at everybody starts at the same spot on the on the map, all right? Everybody starts on go. And now from from where you start to however you want to finish, that's you got it. You, you got taught you, me how to win. The only way to win is to get for the be the first person that gets a monopoly. That's not true. What? That's you said true. that's how you win. You are the first person that gets a monopoly and then you just Keep getting monopolies, and everyone pays you rent, and then everyone goes bankrupt. But the, the, here's the, here's the thing, though, babe. It's not whoever gets a monopoly first. You want a monopoly. You want to be the one to have the monopoly first, absolutely. Well, let's say you get a monopoly and you have no money, and you you can't put any houses on the monopoly. So then you're you're broke. Can't put no money. Can't put no houses down. Rent. So you're not gonna get no luck? rent. There is luck involved. But then that's when the that's when the skill and the and the, the brains come into it. It's like, can you get yourself out and of a hairy scheming, situation? When you, scheming. Yeah. The scheming, all right, of, of making a deal to get yourself in the game, to get yourself further in the game, to really, you know, schmooze your way through, you know? So good. Uh, Thinking about it makes me want to pull it out right now. Yeah, of course it does. Yeah. yeah. Woo, okay, what was the heck? I can have the oh, yeah, question. I can have the question. Um, <clears throat> it asked, what was my relationship with Robert Sala and Navarro Bowman? Uh, so I never actually played with Navarro Bowman. I missed him by a year. I think his last year with us was 2017. And uh, But he's a great player. I met him, talked with him. Great guy. Obviously one of the Niner greats. So, uh, you know, much respect to him. But Robert Sala, uh, you know, haven't talked to him in a while. I, I meant to text him when I was watching the Hard Knocks. Um, from this past season because, I mean, it was so fun to watch him, you know, behind the scenes of, of being the head coach for the Jets. So happy for him. Um, you know, it unfortunate what happened to start their season. Obviously, they're expecting to have Aaron Rodgers, you know, at the helm, and then that happens. But uh, Robert Sala is one of the best coaches I've ever played for. Um, just a, a great, great guy through and through, amazing teacher, He's the reason why I even, I think, got drafted to the Niners. Like, I remember on my 30 visit, he was adamant that, you know, he felt I was one of the top backers in the draft, even though everybody else was saying I, how much I sucked, like, or what I couldn't do. Like, he saw my film and was like, you know what? I I can see exactly, you know, what. He could be. Yeah, what you could be. Well, I don't know if anybody knew what I could have been for real, but he saw some potential. <laughs> He saw potential there, and he was the first one to kind of tell me some things, you know, that he actually – that he liked in my game. So that was like – someone gave me so much confidence. And uh, obviously when they drafted me, I was like, all right, let's go. That's awesome. So it was, it was fun. Mm -hmm. He's great. I remember He's awesome. meeting Love him. him. It was sad when he had to go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Third question is from MF underscore Rogue. 
Roeks. Roeks, I guess. I don't know. Um, he says, "Hey, Warner's help. I need help with my 14-year-old son. His school is asking him if he would be interested in playing football. I love football, but I'm scared for my baby boy to play it. How physical the game is, the injuries, and how players have trauma. Is it just me overthinking about it, or would you allow your kids to play football?" We talk about this a lot. What would you say? So, obviously, me seeing you and your brother both grow up playing football at a young age and then what that seasoned you and created you to be in the future makes me feel positive about kids, younger kids playing football. But obviously, I know that's not usually um, – how it goes you know people do get hurt sometimes as much if you play young it's you're not always going to end up in the nfl um if that's your goal even i'm not sure what his goal is but i mean well, it sounds for, like she's really up, you know football and wants to have her, her son like play yeah i mean we talk about this a lot when we have kids we want to immerse them in all sports because you say it creates i it wasn't in all sports but you say you were and it creates just you figure out what they want to do just because you know you may play football doesn't mean our son's going to play football one day or does it mean you know it doesn't mean anything so Son or daughter right so you just kind of have to like i don't know like you talk about it a lot just got to immerse them in everything and see what they like yeah um <clears throat> So speaking from personal experience, I played from when I was as early as seven, seven years old, like yeah. flag football was yeah. where I started. I, as soon as you could put me in pads, I was in pads. Now, looking back, do I think that that's the smartest thing to do and put little tykes in the pads and hitting each other? Nah, I don't think so. Now, she said her son is 14 years old. 14. So that means what, freshman in high school? Yeah, so it's time. So I think, it, yeah, I think that's the perfect time to start. You know, I, I don't think you're behind at all if you start at 14. I think what's more important is, like it's like Sydney said, immersing your child into multiple different sports because, uh, you know, I guess you call it cross training or just, you know, playing different sports helps for whatever sport you're trying to play later on in the future. So, like, a lot of players that I play with now today – a lot of guys, they played basketball growing up or baseball, like the things that you learn in those sports of ball handling, hand-eye coordination, quickness, agility, footwork, like th all those things translate to the game of football. Mm -hmm. And so, like, I've seen players, like the guys who are the best players, I feel like have that ability to kind of like have, you know, be able to play multiple sports. Like mm -hmm. we pull basketball out and they're able to hoop. He's like, all right, well, he's an athlete. He can play, He, mm -hmm. you know, he's just an athlete. So. I think that's more important than anything. But, yeah, I'd say go for it. Um, 14 years old, perfect age to start football. Um, is it a dangerous sport? No, I think it's getting safer and safer. Obviously, there are different – there's different dangers to sports in general. It is a contact sport. But if you're playing it the right way, keeping your head out, you know, when you're tackling or, or stuff like that, keeping your head out of it and mm -hmm. proper technique, then you're good to go. Yeah. I say – Go for it. Go for it. It's going to have a great time. Mm -hmm. Okay. This next one, Kimberly Carter, 7176 says, Fred, did you learn, what did you learn from your time at BYU that has helped you have so much success in the NFL? Sydney, what is one thing you have done, you haven't done yet in your social media content that you want to try? Go Niners. Hashtag beat the Cardinals. Hashtag we did. <laughs> I love that. Go ahead. <laughs> One thing for me that I have not done yet, well, I would say now, I mean, we hadn't done podcasting before. I hadn't ever done podcasting. I've been a guest, but I've never been the host of a podcast, <clears throat> and neither have you. And when we came across thinking about doing this, I was like, oh, I've never done this before. I'm not sure if... Um, I don't know if people want to hear what I have to say or I don't know, but I am so glad that we did it because I've enjoyed it so much and I think I've learned a lot and I have never done this. So doing something that I've never done before and trying a new, um, I'm going to segue into a new form of social media has been really fun. So mm -hmm. I would say, I would say doing this podcast. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And then she uh, or Kimberly, yeah, Kimberly asked me about BYU. What did I learn from BYU that's helped me have so much success? Um, you know, I had some great coaches, uh, played with a lot of great players. But I think 
the the ability to overcome adversity early on in my career, I think, and in, in adversity being several different things. I think in high school, adversity was I didn't play right away. You know, like high, freshman year, didn't play, played tight end to start, and then kind of gradually made my way up and up and up and became, you know, a good player. Uh, college, I ended up fracturing my low back my freshman year of, high, of college and had a fractured wrist, and I'm in a back brace, have a cast on my hand after my freshman year, and I'm like, all right, like, I don't, I don't know what's going to happen going forward and then having to overcome that, coming back, and then trying to, like, become a good player, you know, and fighting through that. So I think overcoming adversity, I, I learned that a lot at BYU, and, uh, you know, it was, it was a heck of a ride and set me up to become, you know, a good NFL player currently. Okay, last question. We would like to mention also that we've gotten a lot of feedback about your waffle in the morning. Okay. Game day morning waffle. Game day morning waffle, yep. Um, so this is a little bit of a segue off of that. So okay. El Richie 707 asks, yo, Fred, how many waffles so far this season? And are you planning to waffle out the rest of the way? Whoa. <laughs> All right, so a little update on the waffle situation. Yes, I'm still doing the waffle. I've kind of went towards, like, not eating the whole waffle. You know, it's a little too sugary for me. What? Like I said, like, I'm not going to take it all away, all right? Because right? that was one of my – that was one of the options now was for Did me to be like – you have one? I had uh, one yesterday. Okay. Yep. It's crazy that it was yesterday. I know. But yeah, yesterday I had one, and uh, it was delicious. Okay, and you're going to see – you're going to do that every Sunday? Every Sunday. Or Monday. It, or Monday or Thursday or whatever day we play. Okay. It was, uh, it'll continue to go on. And um, yeah, it's just my thing now. And then tonight we're having spaghetti because if you don't know, spaghetti is Fred's favorite meal that mm -hmm. I cook for him. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like victory, like celebratory victory Monday. spaghetti victory Monday. Spaghetti, yeah. So yeah. waffle Sunday, victory spaghetti Mondays. Mm. Um, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> just a lot of great, great food being digested. Yeah, I know. I know you're hungry. Yeah. Okay, so I think that's it. I think that's it. Yeah. I think it was a great episode. Me too. Yeah, Thanks lots of content was covered. Me. Yeah. Thanks for being here with us. Appreciate it. But. Mm -hmm. That is it for today, you guys. Um, thanks for watching. We will be on every Tuesday. If we have to change up the schedule, we'll, of course, like let you know on socials. You can follow us anywhere. Um, you can listen anywhere. You can find your podcast, Apple, Spotify. Watch us on YouTube. And you can also follow 33rd Team on Instagram for any of your NFL needs. And that is it for the Warner House. Bye. See ya. Be sure to subscribe anywhere you get your podcasts and to the Warner House on YouTube.